So I've wanted to make this video for some time. Um, I made one last summer um, about my adventures with weight loss and fitness. And now's the time to give you guys an update. Basically, here's what I want to say. The promise is that... The promise that I'm willing to make to you is that no matter how overweight you might be, no matter how much extra weight you have to burn off, and no matter uh, how dismal a shape you're in physically, it is entirely possible with a combination, it's always a combination, of diet and exercise to get into amazing shape, amazing shape that nobody will be unhappy about, even the most demanding folks. In under a year, and in most cases, because in most cases people are not going to be as overweight as I was, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the amount of weight that I lost, and uh, there will be before and after pictures. Um, so for most people it's going to be between six and nine months of work, combination of diet and exercise, but you can do it in between six and nine months on under ten minutes of exercise a day. That's my promise. And I'm going to briefly explain what I did and what worked for me, and I'll, I'm going to explore some options um, and some principles behind what I, what I think uh, what drove my success uh, in this endeavor. And hopefully the, the principles that I think I discovered uh, can help you if weight loss and fitness uh, are your goals. Again, let me repeat that. No matter how overweight you are, no matter how out of shape you are, no matter how many tens of pounds you need to lose, it is possible in a relatively short period of time, period of time a few months, uh, I would say for most people, uh, it is entirely possible to get into amazing shape uh, in six to nine months by using a combination of diet and exercise and the amount of exercise that you will have to do will be under ten minutes a day and you will not have to own any special equipment or not even have you won't even have to have a gym membership and uh, so it's entirely within your reach no matter what your circumstances um, I'd say that um, it's not a zero monetary expense, but the monetary expense is on the order of 50 bucks for the entire thing. Here's what I did. Here's what worked for me. Basically, it's a combination of a, a very specific kind of diet and a very specific kind of exercise. I'll talk about diet first because diet is key. Uh, you will not get into shape if your dietary habits are out of whack. No matter how hard you work, uh, no matter how much you work out, uh, the extra fat, and we are talking about fat loss when we're talking about weight loss. Uh, it's really fat loss that we're concerned with. <clears throat> Exercise alone will not fix things for you. That's my conviction. It's based on experience. Again, it's my experience. It's an experience that I've had with my body, my metabolism. And of course, everybody's metabolism is different, but there are some principles that uh, I think apply, if not to everyone, then to most people. So, like I said, diet and exercise, let's talk about the diet first. Um, I have tried a number of different diets. I have been uh, trying to lose weight uh, with you know, varying degrees of determination and focus uh, and dedication since 2004. I think I, you know, I can say that I finally succeeded, uh, and by succeeded I mean uh, the total weight loss is now around 70 pounds for me, off of the peak, or rather the trough of my shape, so the peak of my weight to now is 70 pounds. I was 230 uh, pounds or more at a certain point. I am now 160 even. Um... So I've tried a number of different diets. Uh, most of them have to do with calibrating the amount of carbohydrates that you eat. So it's uh, sort of all sorts of varieties of low-carb diets. I've tried Montagnac. That's a, a fairly popular diet in Russia where I was where I when I first started dieting. Uh, it's a French diet. 
uh, based on the glycemic index. And it did work for me, to a point. I plateaued after losing about 20 pounds. Um, and it would not, I could not move the needle any lower with that diet. Even though I worked out uh, for an hour every day, uh, for six to seven days every week, for about a year. Did not do it. Another low-carb diet, uh, or a ketogenic diet that I tried, uh, uh, that worked for me amazingly well, to a point, was the Atkins diet. The Atkins diet worked amazingly well at the time. I was able to go from 215 to 20 down to 179. Uh, that was the best that I was able to achieve with, with Atkins. And I was very happy with myself. But no matter how hard I tried, and again, I, I worked out six to seven days a week for an hour uh, every day. Uh, I, well, again, an hour a day, six to seven days a week for a year wasn't, wasn't moving the needle at all. It, it, it was stuck where it was, and it wasn't moving. Um, so for a while, and all of these things were you know, happening over the course of several years. Uh, I went on and off diets. Uh, at a certain point, I got so stressed at work, and I was traveling so much. I was flying uh, transatlantic all the time. It's very difficult to eat right when you're in business, on a business trip transatlantic. I'm not making excuses. I'm just explaining um, so I slipped and then I slipped again and I, I stayed down so to speak uh, stayed downhill for a while and gained uh, 20 something pounds almost 20 pounds back uh, so at the at the beginning of 2012 I was at 198 and I decided to do something about it again and I went back to a strict uh, relatively strict version of Atkins where you're cutting out pretty much all carbohydrates uh, that you can I stayed, I tried to stay under 15 or 10 grams of carbohydrates a day, which is extremely low. And I started working out. Um, and I think through working out, I was able to, to lose 12 pounds. I went down to 186. Uh, my diet being virtually unchanged throughout the whole period. So in about, um, about six months, I was able to lose 12 pounds, but again, I was stuck. I plateaued at, at about uh, around 186. Uh, couldn't go any lower. Uh, but diet is... I've read various estimates. I, I don't know if you can quantify this precisely with any degree of precision, but I think that an estimate of you know, the diet being responsible for about 80% of your body composition, I think uh, that sounds pretty accurate to me. Uh, again, when, you know, uh, when I look at the changes in diet and what results in terms of weight loss those changes produced as opposed to or rather in comparison to um, with the, resu uh, the results that workout routines produced uh, that sounds very accurate to me uh, at least the order of magnitude is correct it may be 90 to 10 maybe 80 to 20 you know 75 to 20, 25 75 I don't know but diet is very obviously to me uh, responsible for the majority of my results in terms of weight loss uh, so I think this is a good time, as good time as I need to show you the before and after pictures. So here we come. On the left is me at the peak of my high weight, uh, the peak of my extra weight. And yes, it, it was 230 pounds. And I'm not very tall either. I'm, I'm like, what, 5'9", 5'9 and a half. Um, so that's a lot of extra weight, a lot of extra fat. And by the way, not enough muscle. In fact, my, my total fat loss is actually in excess, I think far in excess of 70 pounds um, because I've gained a lot of muscle, a lot of muscle mass. I can't quantify that. I don't know. I mean, there, there probably are ways to measure those things, but I didn't get measured when I was in a, in a bad shape, and uh, even if I got measured now, it wouldn't give me the gain, but uh, I am clearly carrying around much more muscle mass today than I was you know, when I was like, uh, you know, uh, the guy that you see on the left there. And on the right is me now. Uh, the picture was actually taken about four, four or five weeks ago. I look pretty much the same now. You know, I am, you know, I, as you can possibly guess, I'm very excited about these results. I'm extremely happy with what I was able to achieve. And yes, when I say amazing shape, to me, this is amazing. I've been a couch potato for as long as I can remember. I, I never did any sports uh, after the age of 14 or 15. I did some sports in school. Uh, 
but uh, that was that was like over twenty years ago. I played some soccer, played some basketball, but never regularly and never professionally or semi professionally or in any kind of organized manner. And uh, uh, you know, I, I never took care of that aspect of my life. Really, never dedicated much thought to it or energy. Uh, I am working out now, but like I said, uh, my workout amounts to just a few hours a month, maybe four hours a month, at, you know, at the most. I'm I'm beginning to get into running now, uh, and that'll take more time. But that's because I want to run. I never liked running. I still don't like running, but I want to train for an endurance race. Uh, or an obstacle race, rather, or something like a Spartan race, or a Tough Mudder, or uh, what is it called? Um, I forget what the, you know the other names of the other races are. Anyway, a friend of mine is uh, urging me to participate, and I want to try myself at it. Um, so I'm I'm just beginning to run um, a little bit, and that takes more time. But you don't have to run to achieve what I've achieved. I haven't run before. Uh, the picture that you're seeing was achieved with zero running, zero gym time. You know, just a few minutes a day. So, to get to the point on, on diet, though, like I said, I was stuck at a, a certain weight, and it didn't seem to be uh, moving any lower, uh, when a friend of mine uh, introduced me to Dukan diet. Dukan is a French dietologist who came up with the idea, uh, supposedly based on research, which I believe um, spells D-U-K-A-N, Dukan. And uh, it's... a uh, and to me, when I looked into it first, it looked like uh, okay, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a variation of a low carb diet. All right. And I said to myself, what the heck, you know, I, uh, I'll try anything at this point if I can lose a couple of pounds, maybe go down to, you know, what one 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 eighty two from one eighty six, you know, lose a lose a few pounds, I'll be happy. I'll I'll consider that a success. And my highest dream was to repeat the low that I achieved on Atkins. Um, to see the 179 on the scale once again. And I thought, if I can do that, that's definitely going to be a success. So I decided to give it a try. And in the first week, I lost, I think I lost three or four pounds. And then I said to myself, whoa, whoa, why stop now? Let's see how far we can take this thing. And I stayed on it and stayed on it and stayed on it. And before I knew it, it was 180. And then one morning I see a 179. And I'm, you know, I'm ecstatic about it, but then the next day I see 178. And then I really decided to take it to the extreme. I, uh, I really decided to stay on it for as long as practically possible to see, again, how low I can go. Because, see, one thing that I I, <laughs> um, I realized was, excuse the noise, it's planes flying overhead. Uh, I'm, I live not too far from the Newark airport, and uh, these are these are planes approaching the, the, the airport, I think, the, fly overhead quite often um, so you know I, I for a very very long time I sort of accepted the fact that I was overweight and I was fine with it you know it didn't for the most part it didn't give me any inconveniences in life really I mean yeah I, I couldn't move around too fast and you know I would you know get out of breath real fast if I had to climb a long flight of stairs or something but yeah I, I thought what the hell I don't care uh, you know my wife loves me you know I can accept myself I, I didn't really struggle with with extra weight but this piqued my interest. I decided to see, just out of you know, uh, curiosity. How low can this weight actually go? And long story short, today I'm 160. So on that diet, I lost 26 pounds of weight. 26 pounds. And my total weight loss since January last year is. 38 pounds and my total weight loss from the worst shape is 70 pounds um, so Dukan is is a low carb diet but it's a low carb diet with a twist and a system to it it's not just about eliminating carbs from your diet forever it's actually phased in a way that allows you to later reintroduce food groups that would would be taboo to a ketogenic dieter like someone on Atkins um, so that eventually the promise is you can eat pretty much anything you want within reason. Obviously, you don't want to stuff yourself full of ice cream and cereal every day, um, like high glycemic index foods. But you can, you know, there are there are really, you know, the promises at the end of it. Uh, after you complete the last stage or get into the last stage, which is a lot of, sort of like lifetime maintenance stage, 
you can actually eat all food groups. You can eat carbs, you can eat you know, fatty foods, you can eat sweet stuff uh, with certain rules around it, but it, uh, the goal is to introduce you back into the world of normal eating. So the exit curve for you sort of brings you back to the trajectory of, you know, uh, the kind of diet that doesn't look like a diet. You can pretty much eat anything within certain reason, keeping certain things in mind. Um, so it's phased. It's, it's got four phases. And, you know, the first phase is called the attack, where for seven to ten days, and I went full ten days because I really wanted to give this diet a chance to work, you exclude everything but proteins, lean proteins. So you eat eggs, and you don't go... Like, you don't go and eat a dozen eggs a day because eggs actually have quite a bit of fat in them. You know, the maximum is uh, two, two eggs a day. But you can eat as many, as much uh, egg whites as, uh, as you want because those are pure protein. And lean meats like chicken and turkey. Uh, Fat-free dairy products like cottage cheese, which is very high in protein and fat-free. And fish. Now, even if the fish is, you know, got, has fat in it, uh, it's actually not uh, prohibited. You can eat unlimited amounts of fish, any fish. Salmon, salmon is quite fat, but uh, you can eat a lot of salmon. So, yeah, there you have it. You do that for 10 days. Now, it gets old really, really quickly for someone who's not used to dieting. I was sort of battle-hardened, um, and I, I handled it quite easily. You know, it's not a problem for me to restrict my eating. I've been doing it, like I said, for the last... Uh, eight plus years, um, so it's not it's not very difficult for me. But I can see how it's difficult for someone who's not used to dieting. For example, my wife recently went on to con, and she, uh, during the attack phase, she really struggled. I mean, it, it does get old really really fast if you're not used to it. Um, and you drink a lot of water. What happens is your body purges all the you know, unneeded water that's trapped in your system because you're not you're hardly eating any fiber. Or by the way, on fiber. Uh, one component of Dukan diet is oat bran. Oat bran is, is you know, sort of a special component uh, to the Dukan diet. You're actually supposed to continue eating it until the day you die. It's just a couple of tablespoons a day, and you can, you know, you can make stuff with it. You can you make it into pancakes, or if you mix it with, say, an egg and uh, fat-free yogurt, uh, or something like that, or uh, make it into, like, batter and uh, do pancakes. Or you can, you know, you can do, like, a porridge kind of thing where you... I, I just pour you know boiling water over it and it turns into some kind of you know hot cereal and I eat it you know like an oatmeal only with old bran. But anyway, you eat that that kind of fiber. Oh, the the, the kind of fiber that old bran contains is special in how it absorbs unneeded or, or harmful fats in your system and how it pulls everything out of your body as it passes through. Um, so yeah, it's sort of a secret sauce to the Dukan diet. Um, and then uh, the attack phase is followed by what is called the cruise phase, where you uh, eat proteins only on one day, and then the next day you eat proteins plus vegetables, non-starchy vegetables. You can eat as many green vegetables as you want, uh, and things like uh, cucumbers, bell peppers, tomatoes, uh, even things like eggplants and squash. Uh, so you, you alternate. Proteins one day, proteins and vegetables the other day. And you can do one, one, or you can do two, two, two days of proteins, two days of proteins and veggies, uh, depending on, you know, you know what, whatever you, you know, feel like doing. Uh, two and two is more difficult for most people um, because uh, by the end of the attack phase, most people crave anything but lean meats. <laughs> they want you know, anything, any kind of taste in their mouth. Uh, that's how hard it is for, an, you know, uh, uninitiated or uh, somebody who's not used to. Uh, this kind of uh, exertion, um, and that fault that lasts until you reach the desired weight. Basically, you know, I've stayed on that for many months. Uh, well, I shouldn't say many. Well, yeah, you can say I stayed on it for six months, but you don't have to. As soon as you see the weight on the scale that you are happy with, you can you can stop and move on to phase three. Phase three introduces back into your diet, you know, some food groups that were excluded previously. You're allowed to do, eat some starchy foods, um, like rice or pasta, a couple times a year, a couple times a week. You keep one pure protein day a week for the rest of your life, though. Uh, say Thursday, you make Thursday your protein day, and you eat nothing but proteins. Again, fat-free, 
cottage cheese, lean meats, eggs and egg whites, and fish. You eat only those things on Thursdays uh, for the rest of your life. That gives you a chance to purge your body of all the you know uh, unneeded water in your system once a week. You continue to eat oat bran. You increase the intake of oat bran. I, I I don't need to tell you. You can just go and Google it. Buy a book. You know it's, it's going to be the best fifteen dollars you'll ever spend. If again, if weight loss is your goal. Bottom line is, it worked wonders for me. It did what Atkins couldn't do. I broke through all the plateaus that I, you know, previously uh, ran into, and there I am today at 160 pounds. Even uh, I'm curious if I'm ever going to see 159 and change, or even lower, perhaps. I don't know. It's not the goal anymore. My body fat percentage today is somewhere between 10 and 12 percent, which for a, I think for my age, for 38, is pretty good. Um, I think for any age, it's pretty good. It's considered lean or borderline lean or athletic, even though I was never, never athletic, never in my life, ever. So that's the diet part. And again, uh, okay, let me give you a little bit of my understanding of the theory behind this. Your body composition is your metabolism. Your metabolism is controlled uh, by your hormones. Now, it can be regulated through two things. You can change your, your hormone secretion, your hormone, hormone production, and thereby change your metabolism uh, in two ways, uh, at least two ways. There's actually you know, three ways that I can sp speak about, but t two are diet and exercise. Uh, your body uh, produces hormones in response to how you eat in, res in response to the stress on your muscles, uh, physical exertion. So that's the, that, those are the two ways that you can regulate your, your hormones, and you regulate them back to where your body is able to metabolize the things that you eat without accumulating um, fat tissue, all right, fat deposits. Now on to exercise. I think the real interesting promise of this, like diet, you know, people know about diets, and especially people who are trying to lose weight. Uh, you may have heard about Dukan uh, without me mentioning it or if you watch my other video from last summer, or whatever. Uh, but I, the really intriguing, I think, the really intriguing part of my promise is that you can actually, you, you, you can get into amazing shape, uh, gain strength, muscle, muscle definition. Well, muscle definition is a matter of what people can see or what you can see in the mirror, and that is a function of how much subcutaneous fat you have uh, to a large part, and that's, you know, uh, the fat loss... Uh, is driven to a large degree by your diet, but it can be greatly helped by exercise. So what kind of exercise you can do for under 10 minutes a day to become extremely athletic, strong, and get a good-looking body? Well, the, uh, the type of exercise that I've discovered that really affects your hormone production and, there, and therefore your metabolism is called high-intensity interval training, or rather a variation of that, high-intensity interval resistance training. To me, it has translated into a very particular type of routine with a kettlebell. And kettlebell has been a killer app in my weight loss and strength and conditioning program. Um, so first of all, what is high-intensity interval training? It's when you work out very, very intensively for a short period of time at an unsustainable intensity. Then you make a short break, and then you do another interval of high-intensity exercise, and then you do another short break, and you continue like that for a while. Uh, it's not a long while. It doesn't have to be. In my case, again, it's under 10 minutes a day. In fact, right now, I work out for 8 minutes every other day. Okay? There's a link in the description to the workout that got me started. I got a kettlebell way before I started working out with it. You know, I got it and was sitting on my floor, and I, I was sort of too lazy to get around to uh, working out with it. And when I finally started, and that was January 1st, 2012, and I started doing it every day. At the, at the, at the time, I was doing it every day. Uh, since then, I, I've moved to a, a larger weight, a heavier bell, and I feel that my muscles, you know, when I'm working out with a heavier bell, 
simply do not have the time to recover in the 24 hours between the workouts. So I'm giving them eight, uh, 48 hours to recover, and I'm actually gaining strength by doing by exercising less that way. Paradoxically enough, uh, but at the time I was doing it every day because I think the stress, the, the weight was not so great as to create you know, so much stress on my muscles that they couldn't recover in 24 hours. And I did get quite a bit stronger by doing it every day. So you can, you can do whatever works for you, whatever you feel is right. You listen to your body, basically. But it's okay to try and do it every day, and if it doesn't work for you, do it every other day. But I'm linking to this uh, video. It's a, it's, it's a routine uh, that consists of three different exercises. I have added uh, three more exercises to it. Um, so the, the exercises you see the guy do are one-handed swings, high pulls, and snatches with a kettlebell. Uh, I've added two-handed swings, uh, what is called goblet squat, where you squat with, uh, you know, while holding um, a kettlebell in front of your chest with both hands, and also two-handed swing. Two-handed swing is the simplest and one of the most effective all-around exercises with a kettlebell, and I recommend actually that you start with that. And there's a ton of videos online that demonstrate the correct form for the two-handed swing. Um, I, I think they call it the king of kettlebell exercises, and I think deservedly so. So you... The, the reason I think the, the kettlebell is so effective is because it's eccentric. Unlike a, a dumbbell, for example, it's eccentric in that there's a handle, but the weight travels you know, uh, at, a, at a distance from a handle. So when you swing it, and you don't, you don't just lift it, you, act, you can actually swing it. It's convenient to swing, unlike a dumbbell again. Uh, when you swing it, uh, a number of very large muscle groups is working very hard at keeping it at, on the trajectory and st stabilizing the movement of the bell. Uh, you will immediately get it when you, when you try uh, working out with the kettlebell. Basically, the routine that you see, or any variation of that kind of routine, you know, you can substitute some, some uh, exercises, say, I don't know, substitute two-handed swing for one-handed swings, whatever. Mix and match, you know, find out what works for you. Uh, but this, this routine is as good a place to start as any, I think. Um, you will immediately discover that it's a total body workout, that much of your body, your entire core, your, your, your uh, legs, your arms and shoulders are all sore. But not only that, not only is this kind of a workout, a full body workout, with just this one thing, this one kettlebell, you will notice that the guy is doing it following what is called a Tabata interval, a Tabata protocol, where you work out very intensively with 20 seconds, and then you rest for 10 seconds, and then you repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. And the guy goes on for six minutes. Uh, I am now up to eight minutes with a 45-pound bell. I started with a 35-pound bell. Um, the first I was able to accomplish without collapsing was three minutes. It is hard. The way it's designed, this workout, is, again, it's an, uh, it is done at an unsustainable intensity. And by the end of it, you deplete, completely deplete the energy stores in your muscles. You run out of everything. You run, run out of fuel, alcohol, uh, uh, alcohol. <laughs> I'm drinking cognac, so. <laughs> so. You run out of oxygen, you run out of fuel, you run out of energy completely. In fact, you might even feel slightly nauseated at the end. That's okay. That's actually normal. That means that you're stressing your body almost to the limit. And that's the idea. The idea is to use high-intensity interval resistance training with a weight, with a free weight, a kettlebell, to exhaust your body completely in a very short, <coughs> compressed period of time. What happens after that is for the next X hours, I've heard various figures from 8 to 12 hours, for the next 8 to 12 hours, your body is burning energy like crazy is burning fat and converting it to what the muscles need and I forget all the chemical terms for it, the compounds that are produced by the body but the bottom line is your body is eating up consuming the fat deposits the stores of energy in your body um, after the workout you suffer for just a few minutes and then for the next 12 hours you're slimming down and like I said I continued I started three minutes a day after about a week I felt comfortable enough to add another minute to my workout and Another week later, I went up to five minutes, six minutes. For a few, for a couple of months, I stayed at a certain level. I think it was six or seven minutes. Eventually, I went up to twelve minutes with a thirty-five pound bell, and then I got a heavier bell. And now I'm doing eight minutes a day, every other day. Apart from being able to see my muscles in the mirror, and apart from, for the first time in my life, having abs at age thirty-eight. I am actually getting stronger. 
Um, I am able to do over a hundred push-ups uh, at one go. Uh, I'm able to do now twenty-three pull-ups, uh, which is insane for me. You know, at the start, I was barely able to crank out like four, maybe. That was a year ago, four and twenty-three now. Um, so you are actually getting stronger. It's it's a mad conditioning routine for your body, and it's a strength training as well. I mean, it, okay. So for strength training, obviously, I don't know, I don't know how obvious it is, but it's nah, it's pretty it, it, it's 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 pretty well accepted that uh, the barbell training is the best way to build strength. But you see, my point, my my goal in this was not to build strength per se. My goal was to assist in energy uh, expenditure to assist the m metabolic changes I was trying to achieve in my body to burn off the extra fat, and I think it worked fabulously well uh, to, to help me achieve that, that goal. So, um, there you have it. Please keep in mind, low-carb diet. And again, well, when it comes to diet, like, you know, Dukan has worked for me phenomenally well. I've introduced a number of my friends to it, and, you know, one friend of mine lost 40 pounds in six months, by doing a combination of roughly what I was doing, you know, not, not roughly, actually pretty closely what I was doing, a Dukan diet and a kettlebell workout, you know, the guy, the guy slimmed down by 40 pounds in six months, you know, his, his co-workers are, they can't believe what they're seeing, like me, he was, he had to throw away his entire wardrobe and buy an entire new wardrobe, um, his wife was ecstatic, <laughs> so she, she actually lost, I think, 15 pounds on, on the same diet as well. I introduced both of them at the same time, um, and both this friend of mine and myself, we were both able to lose a ton of weight after having tried a lot of other things, including Atkins, both of us, and failing, right? So... Um, so that's one, one part of my promise. The other part of my promise is a kettlebell workout. Check it out, people. It's amazing. Amazing. Uh, total body workout in just a few minutes in the comfort of your home. Get a kettlebell off of Amazon. I think a 35-pound bell costs you like 50 bucks or something like that. In fact, don't get it in um, a sports authority or any other kind of store. It will run you you know, much, much more than 50, bu 50 bucks. And you can get it for 50 bucks with delivery from Amazon. Uh, if you want specific advice, feel free to you know, send me a personal message. But it's a phenomenal approach to fitness. Again, dude, seven minutes a day? The beauty of it is you can never really rationalize not doing your workout, ever. Like, you can always find those five, six, seven, eight minutes, ten minutes. You can always find that time. You don't have to get out of your house and go to a gym and do your thing and then change and take a shower and go back. All this commute and logistically challenging thing, you know, schedule wise. No, you don't have to do that. You can just, you know, put on your shorts, do it in your house, uh, recover. It, it, it actually, t especially when you're first starting out, you, the recovery, like you're, like I said, you're completely out of breath, you're completely out of energy, you collapse, you're, you're almost ready to throw up. That's how exhausted you are in just three, four, five minutes of exercise. Um, so recovery, recovery time shortens actually, for me it's now, you know, I, I work out for eight minutes, I guess I recover in about, you know, next eight minutes or something, like almost back to, you know, completely back to normal, uh, although my, uh, the, the heavier bell is actually pretty punishing. Um, I want to do what is known as the kettlebell snatch challenge, uh, the snatch is the, you know, the third move and the, the third exercise in the routine that I'm linking to, um, and uh, the challenge is you're supposed to do a hundred snatches between both your arms uh, combined. You do a hundred snatches in five minutes. I was able to do it with relative ease with a 45-pound bell. The challenge, though, stipulates that you do it with a 24-kilo kettlebell. That is 53 pounds. I will actually get one soon, and my goal is to try and, and complete the challenge, let's say, by the end of the summer. Uh, I think I can do it, but it's it's gonna take some work. Uh, it's 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 gonna it's gonna hurt. <laughs> it's gonna hurt, but it's entirely doable. You know, I can tell you if you can do a hundred snatches with even a forty-five or fifty-pound or fifty-three-pound bell, you're officially badass. Okay, 
They're not as bad as some serious barbell trainers, uh, exercisers, lifters, but uh, you are pretty badass in my book. Like, I am completely, not completely, but I'm very, very, very happy with myself for having done this. And I, you know, my, my life has changed. I, you know, I work out, I feel confident, I wear different kinds of clothes, I am actually, you know, I don't feel uncomfortable about going to the beach anymore. Um, not that I care too much before my wife calls me a honey badger because I don't really give a shit about it much, but uh, uh, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. So I have, you know, in a combination of a diet and a few minutes a day exercise, I have a completely new body. And I'm, I'm much, much stronger physically than I was, and it was achieved in a relatively short period of time. So again, to sum it up, I, I will finish with what I started with, namely, a promise that you can, in six to nine months for most people, lose up to 40, 50 pounds of extra weight by a combination of smart dieting and just a few minutes of exercise a day. I'd say five to seven minutes a day. You can do it. It's absolutely doable. Look, if I, with my stubborn metabolism and my stubborn body that I never believed it was possible for me to slim down, if I was able to do it, you can totally do it. Absolutely. Um, I was proven wrong. I'm still amazed that I, I could not ever believe that what I'm seeing today in the mirror is actually possible. I am getting used to it now. But uh, when the you know drastic weight loss happened and the kettlebell sort of brought out my muscles and I saw that in the mirror, I, I kept doing it for weeks. I, I kept looking in the mirror and saying, who's this guy? Who is this guy? This is not me. This was never me. And yet it is me. Um, so even if you think it's not possible, it's possible. All right? Um, so I hope my promise inspires you, especially if you've been struggling with fitness and weight issues. You can absolutely do it. Again, if you need any specific advice or pointers or are just curious, feel free to message me. Uh, but I hope uh, that uh, this video can inspire you to do something about fitness and about your physical shape. Because again, my firm belief now that it's absolutely within most of you, you know, most people's reach. Uh, uh, with you know, some some people will not be able to do the diet. Some people with some rare forms of like liver conditions will not be able to do a high protein diet. Uh, because that is what it is. It's a high protein, low fat, low carb diet. That's what that's what Dukan is, at least uh, for the, the first two phases. Um, uh, but uh, you know, barring a serious condition like that, it's absolutely doable for you. If it was doable for me, it's doable for pretty much anybody. That's it. Take it easy.